All right, let's see if we can cover the topic known as action potentials. So what are action potentials? Action potentials can be loosely defined as a short-lasting electrical event on the plasma membrane of a cell. So meaning that it's an electrical current traveling through that, um, through that cell. Most of the time, this happens in the human body, neurons and muscle cells. But it can also happen in endocrine cells. And outside the human body, even some plants can carry action potentials. In, in the neurons, the action potential are usually referred as nerve impulses. And most people that have never heard of the topic of action potential know that neurons can carry these action potentials. So because you're going to cover these on neurons, let's go over the many parts of the, of, of the neuron. As you can see on the screen here, there's a giant neuron being drawn for you there. And I'm going to go over the different parts. The neurons have these antennas that are called the dendrites. So those are the parts of the neurons that can capture that signal, capture that uh, chemical signal that is being sent to these neurons, and then conduct this signal to the other parts of that cell. Specifically, it goes from the dendrites to the body. Or well, the body is also known as soma. And one thing that is very interesting about the body of that neuron is that it has a, a funneling region right here and the name of this region is called the hyloc the hyloc and we get to talk about the functions of the hyloc in, in a little bit once the nerve impulse gate like uh, is being transmitted from the neuron the sequence goes from the dendrites to the soma and then finally to the hyloc and now to this axis and the name of this giant axis here is called the axon the axon. Eventually the information grows like throughout the entire extension of this longitudinal rod called the axon and gets to the very end of this axon which are the terminal branches. So the uh, the action potential is going to travel like essentially like, through the, the extension of the entire axon. But before I get to talk about that, I have like to establish a few things here. One thing that is very interesting about the neurons is that when they are at rest, when they are at rest, they present an uneven distribution of ions across the plasma membrane. So this, what I'm trying to say by that is that you're going to have like a certain polarity for these neurons. If you actually put a voltmeter throughout inside the neuron, and outside the neuron and measure the potential difference, the voltage across uh, the plasma membrane, you're going to see that the inside the neuron, it's more negatively charged than outside the neuron. The name of this, when the cell is at rest, is called the resting membrane potential. Essentially, the potential difference between inside the cell and outside the cell. I have a podcast on that. You can check how this resting membrane potential is established. And it's actually very interesting to know how this is established so you can actually understand the action potentials. But moving on here. The main ions that create this uneven distribution of charges across the plasma membranes are sodium, which is way more abundant outside the cell. And you also have potassium, which is way more abundant inside the cell. And this is a little bit of confusion here because some people have a, a difficult understanding this. We're talking about two different ions, two cations that are positively charged. Sodium has a positive charge associated with it. And so does potassium. So how come you have like the cell becoming like negatively charged inward, in, inside? Well, uh, I like to describe this as saying that the degree of positivity is higher outside the neuron, which is a different way to say that the overall number of positive chargers is a lot higher outside the neuron than it is inside. Because of this, because of this difference in the degree of positivity, you have the inside of the neuron being negatively charged, overall negatively charged. Um, so this is a cell at rest, and we want to like um, somehow modify this polarity. You can actually get the resting mem membrane potential to be disrupted. And if you want to disrupt this resting membrane potential, you're going to have to do that via ionic flow, modifying the quantities of sodium and potassium that you have inside and outside that, that neuron. So one way you can modify this ionic um, charges here, the distribution of these ionic charges, is through essentially facilitated diffusion. 
facility diffusion is just allowing like the ions to move from the place where they have a high concentration gradient to a place where they have a low concentration gradient. There are specific channels that can allow this to occur. So the, the, there are several types of ion channels that allow this to occur, and these ion channels are nothing but proteins inserted in the plasma membrane of this neuron. The first type of uh, um, ion channels that we have are called the leakage channels. And I'm not going to draw them here because it makes the, the drawing very busy. But they are distributed throughout the entire extension of the neuron, allowing, uh, facilitating the diffusion of ions. They are constantly open, and, and because they are constantly open, ions can just move freely through them. But there are certain ions that are not ion channels that are not. There are certain ion channels that are not constantly open. Those are called the gated channels. And the first type of gated channels that we're going to have is called the ligand gated channels. And they just open upon some sort of chemical stimulation. So let's draw some ion channels here in the neuron. So these ion channels here, these ligand gated channels, are cholinergic channels meaning that they have to bind with acetylcholine right here in order for them to open. So once acetylcholine is secreted by something, a previous neuron that is stimulating the neuron that we just drawn here, once this acetylcholine is secreted, this acetylcholine will bind with the ligand-gated channels that they're distributed throughout the dendrites and parts of the cell body. I'm not drawing like, in, like all the ion channels here, but you're going to get the picture here. There are hundreds of those um, ligand-gated cholinergic, because they are binding with pseudocolon uh, neurons, uh, ion channels throughout the plasma membrane. So I do here like the pseudocolon binding with this uh, with this uh, gated channel here, and once you have the binding of this acetylcholine with the ligand-gated channels, they essentially open. And once they open, because you have a higher distribution, a higher quantity of sodium in, outside that cell, diffusion will, will occur down its concentration gradient, so there is an inflow of sodium inside that cell. At the same time this is happening, there is also an outflow of potassium outside the cell. This is a ligand-gated channel that binds of acetylcholine that allows just, just these two ions to move through. And there are different types of um, ligand-gated channels for different types of neurotransmitters. Acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter. And I put like the, the, the inflow of sodium here with a thicker arrow in, in orange here because there's actually a greater inflow of sodium than there is an outflow of potassium. The result of this is that the binding of this neurotransmitter with the ligand-gated channels causes a local depolarization of the plasma membrane. And here I introduce a new word, depolarization. The cell was polarized, the cell was polarized, you had more positive charges outside than you had inside. And I'm going to invert this relationship by putting more positive charges inside that cell. So. This local depolarization of the plasma membrane is called graded potential. Graded potentials. Graded potentials are local depolarizations that happen in the dendrites and the body of that cell. So there are a few like uh, uh, peculiarities of these graded potentials, a few traits of these graded potentials. The first one of them is that they are graded, uh, therefore. The bigger the stimulus, the bigger will be the depolarization spread. In other words, the more acetylcholine that I dump into this neuron, more ligand-gated channels will open, and there will be a greater spread of this depolarization. So the relationship, um, the, the, the membrane that was uh, positively charged inside the neuron and negatively charged outside, once you have the opening of this acetylcholine um, ligand-gated channels, this relationship is inverted, and then you actually have the membrane now becoming positive in inside and negative inside, because there's a major inflow of that sodium. And the more acetylcholine you, pu you put inside, the greater will be the spread of this depolarization wave, if you may call that.
So let's go back here to erase like a couple of the th uh, things here to, so my drawing doesn't get to be too busy. All right. So this is one property of the graded potentials. There is another property of these graded potentials is that the depolarization decays with distance from the stimulus. So if I open these channels right here, these specific channels right here, there is just a local depolarization that will not spread throughout the entire cell. Eventually, just like I invert the relationship, like uh, right here at this level only, and it doesn't travel like to the rest of that cell. But, but that said, if you put like lots of acetylcholin, there is a greater spread of this local depolarization. Indeed, when, you know, like, uh, if the stimulus is strong enough, if the amount of acetylcholine is enough, the, the depolarization, will, depolarization will actually reach all the way to the high lock. You generate a local current that inverts the polarization of that, the entire body or soma of that neuron, and that de depolarization reaches the threshold. So if enough acetylcholine is being dumped here, we actually say that we can actually measure it. So what, as a, there's a, a greater sodium inflow because you uh, put a lot of acetylcholine in the game here, you're going to modify the voltage inside that new, uh, the, the, the voltage of that neuron. If you put a voltmeter here, initially before the acetylcholine was was deposited, I actually had uh, a voltage that read minus 70 millivolts, minus 70 millivolts before the acetylcholine is applied. But after the acetylcholine is applied, this greater inflow of sodium changes the voltage of that cell to minus 55 millivolts. And, the, and, and, and this is not like a, a, a random number. And then this number gets chosen because at minus 55 millivolts, we say that that cell reached threshold. That cell reached threshold. What does that mean? Well, let's put that in the graph here. So on the x-axis of this graph, I have my time in milliseconds. And then the y-axis and the y-axis right here, I have my membrane potential in millivolts. And at rest, it is resting membrane potential. The normal value of, uh, of the resting membrane potential for a neuron, it's minus 70. It varies from neuron to neuron. And even like to other cells of the body, we have different resting membrane potentials. But let, let, let's stick with minus 70 millivolts just for this example here. So um, this um, baseline that I drew that like in, in green is the resting membrane potential. And the baseline that I drew like in, 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 with dots here is called the threshold. So threshold gives an idea that something's going to get triggered from that point on. And indeed, once like threshold is reached, this local current gets all the way to the high lock. And at the high lock, we're going to have like the beginning of what we call voltage gated channels, voltage gated channels. These voltage gated channels are present in the high lock and they are the ones that will conduct the action potentials. So just like, so we don't get lost here. I had the graded potentials happen in the dendrites. Eventually you had reached threshold and now I start to carry the action potential for all the action. So let's see how that's going to actually take place. So the voltage gated channels across the axon open when the threshold is reached. And they're called voltage gated because this threshold generates enough voltage that allows them to open. So as you can probably tell, I do like two different types of voltage gated channels. I have the voltage gated sodium channels. They are fast to open and the voltage gated potassium channels they are slow to open so the first ones that we will open are the ones in orange here these guys so once like threshold is reached so what is going to happen here is that this cell that is completely polarized at this point is going to have the opening of the sodium voltage gated channels and what's going to occur then is that this sodium that is present on the outside this sodium that is present on the outside here let me select that these guys that are present on the outside, they're going to move inward, that cell, just through normal diffusion. So this, um, this movement of sodium like in, inside the cell depolar, depolarizes that cell now at the axon level.
So the sodium inflow that is occurring right here is changing the polarization of that cell. And because you change the polarization of, of that cell at that specific point, the adjacent areas next to it also become depolarized. It's a positive feedback mechanism because the more sodium that enters that cell, the more depolarization you have adjacent areas because you're creating an electrical current like moving through that cell. This movement of charges here, it's nothing but an electrical current. An electrical current is voltage and voltage opens the voltage gated channels. So, of course, this progresses throughout the entire extension of the axon inverting these relationships. Like uh, the, uh, uh, the cell now becomes more positively charged inside than it is outside. And you eventually open all the channels and you completely depolarize that cell. Of course, when I'm doing this, I actually changing the, the voltage, the membrane potential of that cell. So if I look at my voltmeter here, it's going to have to re read something else with that inflow. Indeed, I actually moved from minus 55 millivolts to plus 30 millivolts there's a huge inflow of sodium and that inflow of sodium causes this spike on that curve here. So this spike of the curve is called the depolarization phase and it's caused because the sodium channels are moving in. Interesting enough, these sodium channels that are fast to open, they become inactive after they open. They become inactive after they open. And what do I mean by that? Is that like each one of these channels right here, once they open, they have an inactivation component that closes them and closes this one and closes this one and closes this one. It happens in a sequential manner. But once you have this closing of this, this inactivation of, of the voltage gated channels, this curve cannot like go up more. It peaks, it reaches its maximum peak when when the 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 sodium channels voltage gated sodium channels become inactivated well now it's the time for, to, for me to open the voltage gated potassium channels as this voltage gated potassium channels open and they open after the closure the inactivation of the voltage gated channels they will actually bring this uh, membrane potential down so what's going to happen here is that as I, as I have the outflow of potassium, because now I open a voltage-gated potassium channel, this outflow of potassium will bring the, the voltage of this cell down one more time. And when this is occurring, I'm actually like, the, like this exit of, of, of potassium is bringing like that curve down, and I call this the repolarization phase. Why am I calling this the repolarization phase? Well, because I am returning this cell to its original polarized state. So this outflow of potassium essentially does the opposite of everything I just drew here before. So I'm gonna like change the symbols here again. And what's gonna happen is that these guys now return to their normal state. And then the outside the cell becomes positive and the inside becomes negative again as I have the exit of potassium. But because they are slow to open and also slow to close, and because they are also slow to close, they eventually this repolarization phase overshoots its normal resting membrane potential. So look at the graph here now. Look at the graph right here right now. I have my baseline here that it's the resting membrane potential, and now I'm going to overshoot that. And as I overshoot this, the cell is set to become hyperpolarized. So the polarization that was there to begin with now is exacerbated, it's increased. So this is the hyperpolarization. So this is a nice summary for action potentials. There's more implications for everything I said here, and but it, it, it's a good start to understand it. Just like to summarize everything now, let me uh, uh, try like to review this like briefly here. So I start with a graded potential, a graded potential that happens at the dendrites and the and and the body of that cell. 
the greater potentials open ligand gated channels. Ligand gated channels can have a greater uh, inflow of sodium. If this reaches threshold, if this reaches threshold, what I'm going to have is that the local current travels all the way to the high lock, to the high lock. So the high lock is the area where you're going to have the summation of all these local currents. And then uh, as I have the local current reaching the high lock, I have the, the first uh, um, voltage gated channel will open. The first thing to open are the voltage gated sodium channels. They are fast to open, but they become inactive. So you have a spike on that curve, but it reaches its plateau because they all become inactivated. And then finally, I have the repolarization of that uh, the membrane potential. So the cell goes towards its resting membrane potential, but they are slow to open and they remain like open for longer than they need to. And I have the hyperpolarization of that cell. Okay, I hope that helps. Thank you.